Hi guys, welcome back to Heavy Rain. So last time, oh dear, wow. Uh, so we found out a little bit more about Ethan's psycho uh, psycho psychological problems ever since Jason died. Apparently, little did we know, he was actually having dreams about drowning bodies, uh, which is, wow, strong. Uh, strongly incriminating to him being the origami killer as well as uh, his psychiatrist finding the origami figure in uh, falling out of his pocket during his last visit um, and now we find out that he during one of his blackouts he um, he said something to his wife about um, drowning Dr something about drowning in the rain drowning people or whatever and gosh that's uh, as much as I, I as much as I was just denying it and I didn't want to believe it I don't see how we're going to um, I, I don't see how it's gonna play out that Ethan is not involved in what's going on and that, that makes me really sad for him um, so, something else I wanted to mention along the lines of Norman Jaden, our FBI agent, is uh, I did mention that he falls just as easily into the category, uh, or into the profile that he constructed for who the origami killer must be, as Ethan does. And the difference between Ethan and Norman, which was uh, prior to this last episode, making me suspect him more than Ethan was that we know nothing about Norman's past. He has this weird psychosis thing going on of tripping out and needing to take some sort of medication called Tripto or Triptol or something. Don't quite remember the name. But we know nothing about that. We know nothing about his personal life or any of his background, so that's basically a blank slate for the game to build upon. And it could be relevant in the future, so it makes me a little bit more distrusting of him. Uh, you know, maybe he could have some kind of schizophrenia himself, and uh, he doesn't realize it. Same, same sort of scenario that we have if Ethan were the killer, being the killer without knowing it, having some sort of uh, schizophrenic deal going on where he's you know, doing stuff that he doesn't realize. Maybe the same could be said for Norman. We don't know because uh, we know absolutely nothing about Norman. How'd you get that scar on your face, Norman? I'd sure like to find out. Uh, was there anything else that I wanted to mention? I know there was a couple things that I wanted to bring up that I just keep forgetting to every time we make a video here. Well, anyways, this is uh, Shrink and Punches. Shrink and Punches, that sounds like... Uh, isn't this the one that we just started? Isn't this the one that we already did? Sounds like it. When we were in the shrink's office. I hope it's not. Hi, Norman! We should be playing as... Uh, yes, we're playing as Norman now. Ash, I want you to assign every available man to finding Ethan Mars. I want a man outside his place day and night. Notify all agencies to start looking for That's him. That's right. I want you to keep an eye on the train stations, the airports, the bus terminals. I want every cop in the city on his ass so that if he moves, we know about it. Yes, Ethan Mars is the origami killer. No, origami. He's the origami killer. Sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, well, shoot. I need to make a decision quick. Am I going to... Am I going to... Yeah, there's no reason why I should cooperate with the police if I play as Ethan. Um, Thursday, 7 o'clock a.m., almost three inches, and we are playing a Shelby. There, I got the name right, Shelby. Private Detective Shelby. S Thursday, 7 a.m., three inches. We appear to be out of driving range. Oh, hey, he's still messed up. Look at his face. That's interesting. I wonder if, uh... Oh, wow, that's really small. The most exclusive golf club in town. Strange place for an appointment. I don't actually have that small of a TV, guys. The reason why I have trouble, um, seeing sometimes is that, uh... I can't record in HDMI because I do not have that expensive of a capture device. So, um... Really, I'm just playing off of the standard definition. Big stick, little ball. Never could see the point of this game. Pause. 
All right, guys, one other thing that I wanted to mention that I completely forgot about, the medication. That was kind of stumping me a little bit. I thought it was weird that you can only select to give Ethan a couple different medications at a time. And, uh, and it, it, I was getting that significant vibe, that vibe that it was very important which ones you decided to give him. And as I was watching through some of my older videos for editing, um, it occurred to me that the pain medication said take one every 24 hours. So that seems important that I would obviously now want to make sure I did not give that to him. Uh, well, it's been 24 hours since the first time I gave it to him, but it's a good thing to keep in mind which medications I've given him and which I haven't. That way, you know, you can take the right ones. You know, you don't want to have a uh, Silent Hill scenario happen where, uh, forget that chick's name. You know what I'm talking about, right? The blue pills, or the red pills, or the green pills. You don't want blood coming out of every orifice in the face. I wonder what we're going to talk about. Yeah, who is this person? Where are we, bodyguard? I kept Lauren in the dark on this one. I'll pick her up from her place later on. Good idea. She wasn't really all that much help in the last one, though I'm sure you could have used her to create a diversion uh, instead of doing it ourselves. That didn't seem like a good idea. Well, well. An old friend. Really? An old friend, huh? Let's take a look around. Look around, look around. Oh, I guess that's enough of a look around. What the? Okay. Oh, and also, uh, yeah, it's probably really, really s important to the story if I uh, had looked into the box as Madison, but I didn't because, as most, as a lot of portions of this game are based on a timer or a clock, I didn't want to take the chance that it would have adverse effects to Ethan's health if we had neglected to treat him. I don't. Nice shot. Thank you. Please come in, Mr. Shelby. Would you care for a coffee? Yes, please. Oh, no oh, thanks. I, I mean, no thanks. Do you play? Cream and sugar. I tried once, but I think the owner of the course is still looking. <laughs> I like his sense it's of It's an humor. interesting sport. It requires strength, but also a cool head and absolute precision. Would you care to hit a few balls with me? There's no danger of damaging the greens here. Okay. Take off your oh, jacket. Crap. Grab a club. That means I'm gonna have to play, huh? I haven't really played golf, but uh, I, I wasn't under the impression that it took strength, really, at all. More like control. That's okay. The balls are in that basket. Uh, we could do this. I wonder if we impress him, if he'll give us more information. That sounds like a good theory. Oh! The most important thing is to grip the club correctly. When you feel ready, you swing. Uh, R1, is that what that says? I wonder if this is the father of Gordy, that little shithead. What? What? What happened? I didn't do anything. Don't mess with me, controller! I am your master! Oh, whoops, dang it. All right, we got this, it's okay. Apparently you're not supposed to uh, let go of the controller when you jerk. There we go, four! Impressive. You seem to have a knack Thank for you. it. Oh, beginner's luck. Beginner's luck. No offense to golf players, but it... I'm assuming you didn't invite me here just to play golf, Mr. Kramer. I hear you've been asking questions about my oh, son. Oh, that is him. Ha-ha. That's right. I want to know if Gordy is linked to the origami killer case in any way. Uh, as I was saying, no offense to golf players, but I was always kind of come across as a boring sport to me. I'm sure it's not a boring sport for those who play it, however. Yeah, excuse me, sir. My son had nothing to do with that sordid case. Well, then he has nothing to fear from my investigation. Very rational. I like his approach. 
You have no business investigating my son. I told you, he had nothing to do with it. I'm thinking maybe... With all due respect, Mr. Kramer, it's up to me to decide who I want to investigate. Uh, I'm thinking that the, uh, oops, damn, the course of this conversation depends on my ability to golf, maybe, I don't know. I'm an influential man, Mr. Shelby, and I pay very well for loyalty. Are you trying to buy me? Let's just say I'm trying to show you where your interest lies. Yeah, he's trying to buy us. How much do you want to leave my son alone? I think you misunderstood me. I don't play that game. Don't go near my son, Mr. Shelby. If you do, you'll regret it. I'll kill you! <laughs> Have a nice day, Mr. Kramer. Oh, guys, I just thought of something really important. Okay, you can't see, but I'm actually doing that little, like, two finger on my eyes. I'm watching you. I'm watching you, Kramer! Uh, anyway, I just remembered something really important that I wanted to mention. I was thinking about the nature of the game, and on the cover of the box it actually says, blah, 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 your decisions influence the course of the game or whatnot. And because of that, it wouldn't surprise me if the origami killer were not actually cut, dried, straightforward, same every time, and depending on how you play the game, choices you make, and the actions you do, uh, would determine along the way who the origami killer is going to be. And uh, from a development standpoint, I could see the advantages of that because it has, um, what would you call that, replayability. And uh, so if that were the case, then trying to psychoanalyze the game on that level and, and determine who the origami killer is along the way would be kind of pointless. But as I find that to be the greatest fun in the game, I'm going to continue doing that anyway and at least not, not play it with the assumption that the origami killer is yet to be determined. So, um... Huh. He seems like a civil enough guy, but, uh... Not really very original. You know, the rich daddy who pays to keep his son out of... Oh, dear. Ethan, my friend, I have a feeling that we're going to be in a lot of trouble playing you, and I should cut this... Whoops. Should cut this video off. We'll see what Ethan has to say in the next video.